I'm Katie Dundas from Microsoft. In this video, I'll take you through the six steps you need to take to launch a successful Yammer network. We'll cover three general topics. First, I'll walk you through what Yammer is and how you can use it at your organization. Second, we'll cover the proven strategy for rollout. Finally, I'll share tips and best practices to help you drive ongoing usage at Yammer at your organization. Let's start by talking about why we need a tool like Yammer in our productivity toolkit. In the past, information tended to travel through organizations pretty slowly, and that was okay because the rate of change outside the organization was generally quite slow. Information could be shared in a team, move up the hierarchical chain, be shared with the leadership team, and then move to a different part of the organization and come back down to impact that other team in a different part of the organization. Again, that approach worked fine in an environment where the pace of change was slow. But what we see today in the market is that that rate of change has accelerated dramatically. In fact, 50 years ago, the life expectancy of a company on the Fortune 500 was 75 years. Today, that number is down to 15 years. Think about that. All those companies that had been on the Fortune 500 for so long suddenly lost their place, lost their footing. It points to the accelerating rate of change in the world around us and the need for collaboration tools that help businesses be nimble and adapt their organization as quickly as the world outside is changing. I love this visual because it shows the power of sharing an idea in an open social forum. On the left, you can see how sharing an idea to, through traditional communication channels leads to a fractured conversation. You have to know exactly the people who can benefit from the intellectual property or the content in that email in order to get it to the right place. And then once you get it to the right place, different people may have different responses and they may choose to share with other people. And ultimately what you have when your goal is a lively conversation is a fractured conversation where different pieces of the conversation have ended up in different parts of the organization without full context. When you take that same idea and share it on an open social network that's a part of Office 365, you put that intellectual property, that idea, in a place where all different parts of the organization can discover it, build on it, and benefit from it. It is built to be viral. You share an idea and you can have rich to threaded discussions where even new participants entering the conversation can see the idea as well as all the context of the conversation around it. And at the end of the day, that helps businesses be more nimble and adapt to that increasing rate of change that's happening in the world outside. So let's take a look at Yammer. Here you can see the user interface of Yammer. It's social. It looks a lot like other social networks you may have used in your personal life. You can like a message, you can reply, you can easily share a message. And when you post a message on Yammer, most of the time you're posting it in a place where your colleagues can see it. It's possible to do private messages, it's possible to do private groups, but by and large, most of your communication happens in the open, and that's so other people can discover and share it. Yammer is a fully integrated part of Office 365. You can see up on the left, the app launcher, when people use Yammer as a part of Office 365, it appears alongside all the other applications. This makes it easy to find, and from an administrative perspective, it makes it easy to manage because the same user that may be using Outlook or Microsoft Word is the same integrated identity of the user that's using Yammer. One of the great things about Yammer is that it's easy to get started collaborating. All you have to do is create a group, add the different members you want to be a part of your group, and you're off and running. And that's great because no one has time to wait three days for a distribution list to get populated. People need to pull team members together and start collaborating quickly. And Yammer allows them to do just that. Groups appear on the left-hand side of the screen, and so it's easy to switch between different groups based on which project you're working on. And one of the most powerful aspects of Yammer is that the information is shared out in the open. 
So you can see from this example, when someone asks a question about a general topic like research, it's easy for anyone across the organization to go ahead and chime in and answer that question. This is very powerful for sharing information across geographic boundaries where people from different parts of a company in different locations can chime in to either share ideas, build on ideas, benefit from other people's ideas or answer questions, but also from other departments. Uh, the answers in a quickly changing organization frequently come from lots of places. And Yammer gives you a tool where those, that information and those conversations can happen in a place where other people can see. At the end of the day, this helps companies get more out of their intellectual property because it's shared in a place where more teams can benefit from it and that increases innovation. This saves company money because when you've already spent $100,000 on a research project and another team looks into doing research on that same topic, now they can simply do a Yammer search and find that information. They don't have to go ahead and do that duplicative research uh, project. And finally, it helps project work happen more quickly as all those emails that would be short in nature, sort of iterative, can now happen in the context of a social conversation that's threaded. There's no need to fill up inboxes with little short messages. That can all happen on Yammer. So let's take a look at how Yammer is used at different customer organizations to really achieve these benefits. In this example, you can see that Tony has spotted a problem with the juice bottles that this company is using, and he's based in the Charleston location. Because he shares this problem out on Yammer, and that information is discoverable to people across the organization in different geographies and in different departments, what happens is that his colleagues who have the same role in Dallas, Salt Lake City, and Phoenix all chime in quickly and say, hey, we're having the same problem. Those bottles are terrible. In fact, it's hurting our bottom line. Again, because this problem is shared openly, it's quickly validated by multiple locations and brought to the attention of an executive who can take action to solve that problem. This is just one example of how Yammer can help companies increase the, the customer experience and improve their bottom line. And this is a fairly typical example that we see across many of our customers. So great, now it's time to launch Yammer at your organization. Let's talk about how you should go about doing that. There are six steps you'll wanna take as you roll out Yammer. First is to do the core network setup. This is a simple task that takes about 15 minutes or less. The next step is perhaps the most important in terms of creating a successful Yammer network, and that is to choose the right use cases for your organization. And we'll talk about some of those in just a minute. Third, you wanna draft a vision so everyone across the organization is clear on the role that Yammer plays and is clear on what we expect it to deliver to your organization. Fourth, there are people in different parts of the company that can help you as you roll out Yammer that are aligned to these different use cases. You wanna bring them in early and have them be a part of this project team. Fifth, you'll want to roll out Yammer in waves, starting with the groups around these use cases before reaching out to the rest of the organization. And finally, you'll want to have a plan for driving ongoing usage so that Yammer remains a vibrant part of the communication tools and culture at your organization. One way that Yammer is different from other technology products is that the technical aspects of it are quite simple. You can take care of the technical setup in about 15 minutes or less, not hard. In, you want to spend the bulk of your time focusing on the culture you want to create on your Yammer network. And this comes down to what are the use cases that your organization wants to enable on Yammer? Thinking through what the right use cases is key to driving a successful network. Next, you want to take some steps to create the right culture using etiquette and guidance for your end users so people know how to engage productively on this network. Third, 
It's important to have a Yammer 101 group. When people come to your Yammer network, they may have questions about how to engage, how to like something or attach a file. And you, a Yammer 101 group is a safe place for them to ask those startup questions. And finally, you'll need to have a sense of community management in your network. These don't need to be formal roles that are a part of someone's job description, but you should have a few people in the organization who think of it as their job and responsibility to look after this community on the Yammer network. So let's talk about some of the different use cases. Generally speaking, Yammer is a particularly powerful tool for any group or team that is interested in reaching across the organization. So across different locations, across different departments, uh, because the power of Yammer is to bring those different uh, parts of the organization together in an open conversation. Internal communications is one department that frequently has this need because Typically, they're using newsletters, uh, intranet sites, and email to communicate with employees, but all of those are primarily one-way communication mechanisms. Yammer offers the possibility for a true dialogue, and so corporate communications teams can use it as a part of their communications portfolio to both amplify the messages they want to get out there, but more importantly, get feedback and engagement with employees on all those topics. Remote workers are another group of people that have particular benefit for using Yammer. In many cases, these employees may not have access to email. And so Yammer offers a lightweight communication tools that's available on a variety of mobile devices that allows them to flag problems from the front line that corporate headquarters could go ahead and solve. It allows them to share learnings uh, with each other and different uh, regional groups. So mobile workers are another uh, group of people to consider as a Yammer use case. HR. HR is one of those departments that's frequently bringing new people into the organization and they are motivated to help them get up and running quickly. HR can use Yammer as a way of quickly onboarding new employees by having a group that has all the assets and materials that those new employees need, having a group where they can ask questions and build a sense of community, which will help them feel a part of the organization and ultimately stay there longer. And it can help them learn about other parts of the organization as HR can point them to other relevant groups that will help them in their work. Product innovation teams, you know, any team that's working on building a new product, a new idea, is one that can benefit from Yammer. If you think about, say, you know, silicone research, uh, any company that has a product that relies on this really has a need for their people across the world to share discoveries, to share ideas, and to iterate and build on each other's ideas. Because at the end of the day, that takes that intellectual property and it iterates it and helps the company strengthen it and ultimately leverage it in more places. And so using Yammer as a place to share information, brainstorm and, and really share that sort of creative brainstorming process across different locations uh, is a very powerful tool. So you can have your scientists in Brazil brainstorming with the scientists in England or Arizona uh, and rich conversations can happen on Yammer. And more importantly, those conversations happen in a place where the rest of the organization can see and learn and benefit from them. So if there are new employees who are joining these various teams, that information, those conversations are preserved in context and those new employees can very quickly read and ramp up on the conversations that organization has had to date. Sales is another team that benefits from Yammer as they're able to share information about different accounts, share competitive learnings in real time with a conversational format that can ultimately make the sales force more effective. And finally, IT is a group that frequently has to answer similar questions from end users. Think of Yammer as a supporting element of rolling out new products. You can create a Yammer group for a new product you're rolling out, say Skype for Business. 
And if you create that Skype for Business group, you've created a place where your end users can ask their general questions about that product and get some of that self-help um, in a way where you only have to answer that question once and it's visible to the rest of the organization. So those are some of the typical use cases for that cross-company use of Yammer. The other core scenario for Yammer is using it as a tool for team collaboration. As we've talked about, it's easy to set up a group on Yammer. It's easy, easy to add people and get started. And so the use case that's not on this slide, uh, but is certainly one of the more common use cases, is that any team in an organization, say a team planning an event, can just set up that group, add the different vendors and company employees involved in that event, and then use that Yammer group as the place where they plan and execute the event, sharing all the documents and files as a, uh, as that come up in that process. Now, we've talked about how 20% of Yammer rollout is, is technical, but the 80% is around culture. Here are best practices for how to establish that positive culture. So at this point, you've got the couple of use cases that you think make sense for your organization. What you want to do now is create groups for those use cases. And there's a set of real estate on the right hand side of the group page in Yammer where you're able to give guidance on how to engage. So, for example, if you have a group that's around silicone research, in that info pane on the right hand side of the page, you'll want to say, use this group to share new learnings about silicone research uh, or to chime in on other people's ideas. This is the place where we're having the company discussion about silicone research. So you tell your users how to engage. This is a key difference between social networking in our personal lives and social networking in our business life. Because in our personal life, of course, it's okay to waste time. So we don't have to worry about how to engage. We can engage however we want to. But when we bring social networking into the workplace, it's very important that we structure it so that it will be productive, make every employee more productive through their engagement. And to do that, we need to deliver that guidance on how to engage in each group. So that's point number one. Point number two is to have that sense of community management. Listed here are a couple of things that community managers can do or anyone who's looking after the community can do. And it really boils down to treating your Yammer network the same way you would treat a real life party uh, in your home. Be the host, be friendly, uh, welcome people and acknowledge and reward their participation in events. Uh, the same principles that apply in, in real life also apply online. And finally, having a Yammer 101 group where people can ask questions as they get started on Yammer is another best practice for establishing a positive culture on your network. Drafting your vision is a key step to take as you talk to more people through your organization about the decision to roll out Yammer. Now, these don't need to be complicated, lofty vision statements. It can boil down to just a few bullets that reflect the use cases that you plan to use. On this page, you can see some common uh, reasons that people roll out Yammer at their organization. Um, go ahead and just reflect on the use cases that your organization plans to use and jot down a few bullets. That's good enough. This will help you in those conversations with people across the organization explaining why we've decided to move forward with Yammer. It's important to note that the reasons it makes sense for an organization to roll out Yammer are different than the reasons why an end user or an employee would choose to participate on Yammer. Human nature is such that we are not going to make a change in our behavior unless we see there's something in it for us. And so for end users, you're going to have a different set of messages. You're not going to take that vision statement for the organization. You're going to talk to end users about why Yammer can help them and why it makes sense for them. And here we've got a couple bullets jotted down that explains that, hey, this is going to make your life easier because you're going to be able to collaborate with your team members around uh, different locations or around the world in a social workspace. It's very familiar and leverages uh, the same conversational gestures that we use in other social networking. 
Microsoft has created a number of templates that you can use when you're ready to communicate about Yammer to your end users, and all of that messaging is already baked into them. Uh, the templates are customizable, so you can change them as makes sense. Another key factor for rolling out Yammer is to bring the right people in at, before you roll it out. And the most important person that you're going to get on your team is a business leader or decision maker. And you want this person to get behind the Yammer rollout. And that means they're going to be sending those mails to the rest of the organization announcing, hey, we're rolling out Yammer. It's the social workspace in Office 365, and here's how we're going to use it. You want them to hit send on all of those mails. You also want them to participate on the Yammer network. Now, they do not have to be a digital native or a social native to do this. It's perfectly okay for you to walk to their office, sit down next to them, help them draft that first post, and show them how to hit the post button. That's perfectly fine, and many people are in that situation. Uh, from a, a re, you know end user perspective, for employees across the organization, all they see is that a business leader has participated, and that is a powerful motivator for them to participate in Yammer. Because if you know the most influential people at your organization are on this network, that makes you want to go there and engage there too. The project lead. If you're watching this video, this is probably you, uh, but it can also be someone else in your organization. If you have someone who is passionate about social networking or a change manager, and the third group of people that need to be a part of your rollout are, is someone from each of those teams that's affiliated with the use case you plan to roll out. You wanna bring these people in early, have a conversation about Yammer and what you think it could do for their team and have them be a part of the process from day one on rolling it out to their team. So let's talk about rollout. Yammer is, is a product you wanna roll out in waves. So wave one, you roll out to those first couple of use cases that you see can benefit from Yammer. It's important to note that this is not a proof of concept. This is not a pilot. Uh, this is simply wave one of a rollout that will continue with wave two and maybe even a wave three. And so it's not a limited rollout. Uh, you can, you know, if your first use case involves 20 people from two different teams, and after two weeks, you notice that there are now 40 people in the Yammer network, that is great. That means those 20 people saw value and they invited their friends. That means those 20 people collaborated with 20 more people and pulled them in in a very natural, organic way. So that is a, a per, that's a great outcome. So in wave one, you wanna work with those departments who are uh, involved in those use cases and really get them in the network and using it. And of course, as a part of that, you will have already done the 20% technical setup of your network um, and created that Yammer 101 group and some of those other best practices. This link at the bottom of the page, you can access um, a document. We've created a document that walks you through everything you need to do for wave one. At the end of this presentation, you'll have the opportunity to download this PowerPoint. All these links are live and you can access a complete library of content that will help you launch Yammer at your organization. Now let's talk about wave two. Once wave one is active, you have teams that are using Yammer, they're seeing benefit, you've got employees at your company who know how to use Yammer, now it's time to roll it out to the rest of the organization because when the rest of the organization comes to your Yammer network now, it's going to be active. It's going to be populated with all the core content it needs. There's going to be a sense of vibrancy about the network. If we go back to that party analogy, this is the difference between being the first person at a party when you, all you see is an empty house versus being the person who arrives an hour later and can hear the music from the outside and can see lively conversations happening on the inside. That's the state you want your network to be in when you roll it out to the rest of the organization. Wave two is the time that you have that executive send the email to the rest of the organization using the templates that we've provided. You could consider holding a launch event to get everyone aware of the new Yammer network and to teach them how to engage on it. There's a number of training activities you can do. 
we actually have a host of ideas that are pulled together in this Yammer launch ideas document. We've looked across our customer base and harvested some of the most creative thinking that our customers have done when rolling out Yammer. There are great ideas in this deck and when you're ready, take a look and I guarantee you will see a lot of uh, creative thinking um, that may spur your ideas about what's right for your organization. And finally, once you've launched your network, it's important to take steps to drive ongoing engagement. And one of the best ways to do this is to look for milestones that are relevant for your organization that you can celebrate on Yammer. This could be when the 200th person joins your Yammer network. It could be when the 2000th message is shared on your network. It could be on your one year Yammerversary. There are a variety of different milestones that could make sense. Think of one and use it as an opportunity to celebrate Yammer and its use at your organization. And that means having activities that show the value that people are getting out of this Yammer network. On the right, you can see some examples of network celebrations, an infographic that includes number of messages shared, number of members, um, daily challenges, a contest that gets people, um, that motivates people to actually visit the network and share some of their best or most valuable experiences on the network. Fun things like cookies um, and photo challenges. All of these are tactics that you can do to celebrate milestones. And of course, there are a number of other uh, tactics you can implement as you're ready to drive ongoing usage. You could hold an online event like a one hour Q&A um, in which an executive answers questions from the whole organization. You could take a look at the content and programming. Maybe there's some uh, a weekly report or new content that you want to share through Yammer instead of email. Uh, the communications team could look to incorporate Yammer more deeply into their communication channels. You could look at new use cases that you enable and work with those teams to make them real. You can study the analytics and look at what are the posts, what's the type of engage, what's the type of activity that's driven the most engagement, and then optimize your content and programming or activities or use cases based on that knowledge. And finally, you could reach out to the power users you see. Sometimes these can be people who, whose roles have nothing to do with Yammer, and yet they're just passionate about social networking, they're community members just by nature, and by working with these people, you can help reach new and different parts of the organization uh, to ultimately grow engagement on your Yammer network. So there you have it, the six steps to setting up a successful Yammer network. You wanna start with setup. It's 20% technical, 80% focus on culture. Next, you wanna have the right use cases for your organization. Third, you want a strong vision so you can get everyone on board what we're trying to achieve with Yammer. Fourth, you wanna pull in the right people from the organization so that each one of those use cases that you pick for your organization has the endorsement of someone from that actual team. Fifth, you wanna roll out in waves so you have that lively party started on the Yammer network before the rest of the organization comes in. And finally, you have a plan to drive ongoing usage so that you can keep Yammer as a core part of the way your organization communicates and collaborates. So in closing, we've talked about what Yammer is and how you can use it at your organization. We've walked through some of the best practices for rolling it out from identifying the use cases to driving ongoing usage. And finally, we have a collection of materials that you can access when you're ready to go ahead and roll out Yammer at your organization. So the first thing you'll wanna do is to go ahead and visit this URL where you can download the presentation and all of the other uh, supporting materials. You'll wanna join the Office 365 network. That's our customer community where more than 70,000 customers share tips and best practices for Yammer, as well as all the other products in the Office 365 suite. This is a great place to go for information. Not only does Microsoft share all of our guidance for customers there, but more importantly, 
all of our customers share their tips and best practices based on their real life experience with the products. So this is the place you can go and get advice from literally thousands of other people who've already taken this journey of rolling out Yammer and they've learned lessons along the way and they can share those lessons with you. So visit this URL, enter your email and sign up for the Office 365 network. Finally, I'd appreciate it if you could give us feedback on this presentation with a simple three question poll. You'll need to go to this link. It will take a minute or less, uh, but would really appreciate getting your feedback um, so that we can make this presentation and all of the resources we provide better and more valuable for you. That's it. Thank you for your time today. I wish you the best of luck in rolling out Yammer. Thanks again. In these next two slides, we've pulled together all of the uh, resources and assets that can help you as you go from thinking about rolling out Yammer to actually rolling out Yammer. Again, at the end of this presentation, you can download this and all of these links are active and you can click them and use them uh, when you're ready.